Greetings everybody, this is Sliced Lime, and this is a new command block tutorial. As usual, I'm in a freshly created world and will do everything from scratch. So start by giving yourself a command block. And we're going to do game row, command block output false. This is not going to be a clock focused tutorial, but we will be using a clock later on to show something. So I want to turn that off and we're also for the sake of seeing something in this tutorial, turn daylight cycle off. So that is that. What we're going to be talking about is custom loot for your mobs. And that is not necessarily a simple thing. And this could be anything from a mob you summon or from changing the loot of all the mobs in the world using entity data or whatever. But we're going to do it with slash summon. So we're going to summon a zombie pigman. Those are named pig zombie. And the reason I'm doing a zombie pigman is because I want some, first of all, something that doesn't burn in the daylight. So if we just summon that, probably should have summoned you on top of the block rather than into the block, shouldn't I? Let's grab a sword and... No, give out! So they drop this rotten flesh. That's what they drop. Now, let's say we want to add our own drops to this. And the reason I chose the pig, zombie pigman is because they can pick up items, and that is actually important. So let's just say that we want zombie pigman, this specific zombie pigman, to drop a golden apple when you kill him. So how do you do that? Well, there is no loot table as such in Minecraft. What there is is the equipment that this zombie pigman or other mob is wearing. So we have to go and modify its equipment. Now the equipment is a list of five things currently. We'll see how that changes with uh, 1.9, but currently the equipment list is five things. So that is the item held in its hand, the armor worm on its feet, its legs, its chest, and on its head. Those are the different five fields. So this zombie pigman can actually pick up an item or hold an item in its hand. So let's just put an item in here. Let's uh, put a stone sword in its hand. And you see that he is now holding a stone sword. <laughs> And as you can see, he dropped a somewhat broken stone sword to me now. And that is part of this mechanic. So anything the zombie pigman is wearing or holding, for anything in its equipment, can by default drop. Which means that we can, let's remove this for now just to not spam this, but we can give him an item. So we could give him an ID, gold apple. And if we start with that, he's now holding a golden apple. And of course, if I kill him, he has a chance of dropping that item. So I got the golden apple. But normally, if we want custom loot, we don't want it to show. So we don't want to put a golden apple in his hand. So the simple way we fix that is by putting a golden apple down his pants. You can't see a golden apple because golden apples are not armor pieces. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't have a golden apple. This guy is wearing a golden apple for trousers. Now, if you kill him, it could drop, but it didn't this time. Now, that is where our next tag comes into question. And that is a tag called drop chances. Now, that is also a list also with five things in it. This time it's not tags, as in the case of the equipment, but rather numbers. And floating point numbers to be precise. So if I do 1f, 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 and 1f. Now, as is sometimes the case with data tag, the data type of this is actually important. You have to put 1f in here for this to work. If you just put 1, it will not work. Let me show you this, and then explain a bit more about it. So if I... Go ahead and kill this guy. He definitely drops a golden apple. See, I picked up a golden apple and now I have two. So if we get rid of some of the stuff and summon him again, he will now again drop a golden apple. 
So I get a golden apple from him every time I kill him now. That is because this number acts as kind of a probability, but a bit more. So let us say that instead of a golden apple, he should be carrying a golden shovel. Summon and we still can't see the golden shovel because the golden shovel is not pants. <laughs> so let's kill the guy who drops a golden shovel. Now, as you can see here, this golden shovel is partially broken. And that is because these are set to one. So they both control the drop frequency. So the chance of you getting an item at all, if it's set to less than one, there is a random chance that the item will drop. And if it's set to one or more, the item will always drop. The default number for this field is 0 0.085 for all of the fields. This is the default drop chance. That means the item will only be dropped in 8.5% of the cases. Now, if a mob can pick up loot and picks up something, this immediately changes to two. Now, if the value is between zero and one, including one, the dropped item will have a random durability. If this drop chance is more than one, so two in this case, or 1.5 or whatever, the dropped item will have the durability that it had when it was picked up. So let's test it out by setting this to be two and respawning the zombie again. Now let's kill him and see our shovel is now completely whole. Now of course I could go in here and I could change the damage value to be whatever I want it to be. So let's set the damage to one spawn the guy again, kill the guy again, and pick up the shovel. And you'll see that now I have a one durability taken off of this golden shovel. So that way you can control exactly the way things drop. Now that is great, but there are a few problems inherent with this. Uh, first of all, let's say I want him to drop a golden chest plate. So let us click here. Now we have put a golden chest plate as his pants. This looks suspiciously like golden pants to me. What happens here is because he's wearing an armor piece of a certain material on his legs, that armor piece is rendered as an armor piece of that material on his legs. So let's kill him and pick up our golden chest piece. So that means there is no way to put armor onto this guy without it showing and still have it drop. We are also limited since all items show in the hand slot. We can't really use that without changing the appearance of the zombie or whatever mob it is. We are limited to four slots. Sometimes maybe we want more items to drop, sometimes we just want armor items to drop that shouldn't show up on the mob itself. There is a way around that, and that is why we need a clock. So let us create a clock here by using set block. like so. This is now a clocking block and we can run commands off it. So the way to solve the problem of not being able to have a more equipment than four slots or to have equipment that would otherwise show on the character is to use a placeholder item. And this item should be something that can never be faked by any player and that can never occur naturally. So you have a few options of unique items, but I am going to simply use a written book. The reason to use a written book is because you can add unique data to its tag. For instance, you can add the author and set the author to be sliced lime, for instance, and you can set the title. So let's just say the title is loot. Now if I spawn this guy and kill this guy, of course he drops a book and my inventory is full of crap. 
So the book is called Loot and it's by me. Now, that didn't really help us much at this point, but what we can do now is we can detect. So let's place this block here. This is the first block executing on the, this clock. And we're gonna need a scoreboard, so let's add one. Scoreboard objectives add loot dummy. Now what we're gonna do is scoreboard players set at E type equals item loot one. So we're setting the score of items to one in the loot scoreboard objective. If their item is ID Minecraft written book and the tag is that the author is sliced lime and the title is loot. The score objective sets play sidebar loot. And we can see this guy got the score of one. But if I just do give slice lime written book and throw that on the ground, that does not get the score. So we have to match this tag, and there's no way for a player in the world to match that tag because they are not you, and you get to not abuse the system. <laughs> so now that we have that there, we're gonna uh, put on another block here and one more block here. This is gonna be the last block that executes on the clock, and this is gonna execute before it. So in the case that you want more items, then you'd have to do this on a fill clock and add more blocks. And in this case, we're just going to spawn one single golden chest plate because that was what we were trying to spawn. But what we're going to do here is kill at E type equals item score loot min equals one. So they disappear once we're done with them. And then what we're going to do is an execute command for at E type equals item score loot min equals one and remember this happens before we kill that item so this what the purpose of this clock is that it detects that something has dropped and it immediately summons another thing and then kills that placeholder item and you can never pick that thing up on the first tick so what we're gonna do is summon an item wherever that item was so we're kind of replacing it with a different thing and we're going to do item, and that is going to have an ID, which is golden chest plate. And it's going to have a count of one. So now if we try that again and kill this dude, we can see that he dropped a golden chest plate that he didn't appear to be wearing. Now, if we wanted more items, we could simply add a bunch of more blocks and then do the exact same thing, but replace this item ID count thing with whatever we want our item to be. The only thing we have to make sure is that this block that kills our placeholder loot item is executed last. One thing I should mention is that this drop chances list is overwritten when you do this. So if you were to do entity data to change the drop chances of mobs in the world, then if they have picked up items, they are going to have a two in their hand slot or two for the armor piece that they've picked up. And if you set the drop chances, even if you intend to only set one or two of them, then they are all going to be replaced. So that's worth keeping in mind. Other than that, you should now know how to summon your own entities that have custom loot. I hope this tutorial was useful to you. If it was, please do leave a like on the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.